Well, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Derek Thompson, and I am nobody. <laughs> no. Um, I have the honor and privilege to be a part of this great staff here at the church, and uh, one of my responsibilities is to lead up our ARC adults here at the church. And I will forever be grateful for this church, for our senior pastors, Pastor Allen and Miss Joy, because literally they and you, I truly believe, saved my life. Um, and I will forever be grateful for the Ark Church, no matter where I go and no matter what I do in this world. Uh, they are such a huge blessing to me <clears throat> and my family. Um, do me a favor this morning, if, if you wouldn't mind, look at your neighbor on your right and tell them, I love how y'all did that. Everyone shifted their heads. That was pretty cool. <laughs> look at your neighbor on your right and tell them, cast your care, cast your care. And, leave it there. and leave it there. Now, I want you to look to the person on your left, and this time I want you to say it like you mean it because you didn't mean it the first time. <laughs> look to your person on your left, say, cast your care, cast your care. And, leave it there. and leave it there. Cast your care and leave it there. Why is that important? You know, may, maybe some of you are like me uh, in the past. You know, I was a serial worrier, okay? Like I had a PhD in, in anxiety and stress and worry, and, and, and I thought, you know, it was a good thing because it meant I cared. It meant it meant, it meant something to me. And, and guys, God's never told us to worry and to be anxious and to be fretful. No, he tells us to cast our care on him. The scriptures tell us in Psalms, uh, the 55th chapter, 22nd verse, it says, cast your burden on the Lord, release it, and he will sustain and uphold you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. You won't slip, you won't fall, and you won't fail. That's a promise from God. But we have to be willing to cast whatever it is over on to him. It, the scripture said burdens, you, you may hear cares. Basically, bottom line, anything that's weighing you down with worry, with anxiety, anything that you're fearful of, you need to give it to him. Guys, we were not designed to carry weights and anxiety and we, we weren't designed for that. But he is. He can uphold those things. We can't. See, here's what I, here's what I believe. You know, my wife and children, they, they give me a hard time because I like movies where the first hour, hour and a half, it doesn't look good for the protagonist. It's challenging. It's tough. But because I love, I know at some point in the middle of that movie is when the tide of the battle is going to turn. And there's going to be an overcoming and in the end, that person or those persons or that team is going to stand victorious. Well, here's what I believe. I believe today is a day that the tide of the battle has, is going to turn in your life and in my life. Thank you for that, Veronica. You believe that, don't you? How many, how many, who else believes that God's going to turn the battle in, in your favor today? But guys, hear me, hear me with this. I believe it all starts with our willingness to be able to cast our care and leave it there. See, some of you I know are like I used to be, and what I would do is I'd come to church services like this, I'd say, hey man, preach it brother, oh, that's good, yeah, uh-huh, woo, thank you Jesus. And then I said, I'm casting my care and I'm gonna leave it there, and by the time I got to my car, I got that care and other cares with me. <laughs> we have to leave it with the Lord. The Bible tells us this in Philippians 4, 6. It says, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance, every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make specific requests known to God. It says, don't be anxious or worried about anything. About anything. Does that include our children when they lose their minds? Oh, maybe I'm the only one, huh? <laughs> Does that include when we have financial difficulties? Yes. Does that include when we have sickness in our bodies? Yes. Does that include those seasons where maybe our marriages aren't where they should be? Yes. Does that include the times when you go to work and when you go to work, there's a pink slip waiting for you? Yes. Yes. It says, do not be anxious or worried about anything. Anything. And so our job 
is to learn how to give it all to the Lord. And not only give it to him, but willing, be willing to walk away and leave it there with him. And I believe when we can grab a hold of that concept and take it to heart, it is the beginning of the tide turning in your favor. Amen. There's a story in the Bible that I love. It's a story about Elisha and the Shunammite woman. It's a beautiful story. The story goes that Elisha would go to Shunamm and, and there was this noble woman there and, and, and every time he went, he would stop in at her and her husband's uh, home. The, the Bible says that this was something that he did on a regular basis. Well, in 2 Kings verse four, uh, or chapter four, verses nine and 10, look at what it says. It says, and she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be that whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. I think it all starts with this. She was able to recognize that he was a holy man of God, that he was a good man of God. I believe for all of us, it starts with us understanding that God is good. Not just the saying, but that he is good. That God is faithful. That God is true to his word. And then personalizing it and understanding that God is good to me. God is faithful for me and that he's gonna be true to his word for me. Amen. You see, she recognized him as good and holy. We have to recognize the Lord as being good and holy and faithful and true and always on time. Amen. We have to recognize that. The second thing here in this passage of scripture, I don't know if you realize that, but she went to her husband and she said, let's set up a place. And she got, it, it, the scripture gets very detailed. It says, uh, let us put a bed in there, a table in there, a chair in there, a lampstand. This wasn't going to be a one-time thing. She made a permanent place for the man of God. Guys, you and I, we have to make a permanent place for the Lord in our lives. Like he's got to be a priority. We can't be fitting, we can't fit the Lord into our lives. We can't fit the Lord into our schedules. He's got to be first. The team just sang the song, Firm Foundation. Understand this, if you will make God your foundation, the starting point, and build on that, there is nothing that the enemy can bring against you that will take you out. Nothing. So we've got to build a permanent place for the Lord. And when we do that, it puts us in a great position. Now, maybe you're like me. And I struggled for a very long time. I struggled in the fact of feeling worthy uh, because a lot of things that I was dealing with in my life, I brought on myself. A lot of mistakes, a lot of boneheaded decisions. But here's the deal. God's faithfulness and God's goodness, it ain't based on you. It's based on him because he's good. And guys, if you'll humor me, I know I jumped out of, out of order here, but if you'll go to Ephesians 3.12, Ephesians 3.12 says this, it says, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. So it's because of him. Say it with me, say, because of him. Because of him. Because of him. He's a good God. He's able to look at me and say, Derek, I don't care about the decision. Come to me, give it to me. It's because of him and our faith in him. And then in Ephesians 4, 16, it says this. So let us come boldly to the throne of, uh, throne of our gracious God and there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. I love this because God is always available. He's always accessible. He is always there for us. You and I, we may not be able to get to the CEO of our company. There's times where we may, we may not be able to get to our doctor. Times where we may not be able to get to the president of the United States. Whomever. God is always available. And so we have to be willing to go to him and to cast our care 
and leave it there. Does that make sense? The story goes on with the Shunammite. It says, you know, uh, Elisha would come through time and time again, and he would be blessed. And he was so blessed that one day he called to his servant. He asked his servant, how can we bless this woman? And the servant said, well, she and her husband do not have a child. And so Elijah spoke a blessing over her, and the time came where she was able to conceive and have a child. Story goes on to say that one day the boy was out in the field with his father, and he began to experience some pain in his head and, and, and dizziness, and the father sent him in. And it goes on, it says, he went into the house with his mother, sat on her lap, and then died. And that's where we'll pick it up here in 2 Kings 4, verse 21. It says, and she went up and laid him, her son's body, on the bed of the man of God, shut the door on him, and went out. Did you catch that? The permanent place that she made for the man of God was where, was where she took her problem and placed it. She took her son and placed him in the room that she created for the man of God. You and I, when we've created a permanent place in our lives for the Lord, we need to get to the place where we take those problems and place it in his hands. Amen. The story goes on and says that as she closed the door and went forward, her husband's like, what's going on? Why are you going to see the man of God? Time and time again, she was questioned as to, what are you doing? What's going on? Why are you going forward? And every time she was questioned, she said, it is well. She got to the man of God. She explained the situation and she made a decision that she was going to cling to him until he was able to come and turn that situation around. You and I, that has to be our heart. We have to take these problems, these challenges, these situations and cast them over to the Lord in that permanent place that we have for him in our life. And then just like the Shunammite woman, be determined that I'm gonna hold on to God until this situation turns around. And can I tell you something today, guys? God is faithful. Amen. And if he did it for her, he'll do it for you. Yes. He will turn your situation around. <laughs> but you and I, we've got to learn to, turn on the, uh, to call on the name of Jesus. It's a name that changes everything. And uh, you won't be disappointed. So how do, we, how do we practically go about casting our cares on the Lord? The first thing we have to do is we have to stop the anxious, worrisome, fretful thoughts before they start. We've got to stop it. We can't let them go. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says this, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Whatever you allow to hold your attention, whatever you keep your thoughts focused on will have a major impact on your life. You and I, we must resist the devil when he tries to plant anything contrary to the truth of God's word in our minds. And here's the deal, guys. When we resist him, the promise is, is he has to flee. So if you get a phone call, an email, a letter in the mail, and your mind begins to start racing, you and I, we have a choice to make. Do we worry or do we stand firm in faith? It's a choice all of us have to deal with. But I'm going to ask you this. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, come on, church. It's beautiful outside. <laughs> the worship team just sang our, us up in the heaven, and, and uh, we were like, no, he's, yes. Uh. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. There you go. Is there anything too hard for the Lord for you? No. There's nothing too hard for the Lord for you. Now, I'm not saying... Just because you have faith, things are easy. But what I am saying is, is when you have faith, it makes it possible. Faith is important for each and every one of us. So we have to take those thoughts captive. 
and stop it before it gets started. Second thing we have to do is we have to, we have to replace those anxious and fearful and worried thoughts with the word of God. Philippians 4, 8 says this. And now, brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what's honorable, what's right, what's pure, what's lovely, what's of good report. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. He says, fix your thoughts. So we have to stay in the word of God. We gotta stay there. Why? Because when life happens, and guess what? Life's gonna happen to all of us. But when life happens, and those anxious and worried, worried thoughts start to rise, when you replace it with the word of God, when you put the word of God on the inside of you, it begins to rise up and take those thoughts captive. We here have, at, at the Ark, we have something called Bible 365. If you're not a part of that, I would encourage you to do that. It gets the word in you. Pastor does dev devotionals every week. I'd listen to those. You can get involved in a serving opportunity, in a class. Whatever you need to do, your personal study time, get the word in you. Because it will help you. You know, I said life happens to us all. It happens to us all. Early part of the summer, I was sitting in my office, I was getting ready to teach a class, and I get a phone call. And I get a phone call from, um, our, actually, our, our mortgage company. And our mortgage company tells us that when we first got the house four years ago, uh, there was a clerical error, and it was on their part, and we were going to have to figure out how to rectify that clerical error on our part, and there was a substantial amount of money. Well, the old Derek would have been running out here screaming, you know, passing out because I would have been trying to figure it out in my own strength. But I've learned on a personal level to cast my care and to leave it there. So I listened to this individual and they said, the last thing they said was, is you have to have this resolved by this date. I said, well, thank you for calling. I hung up the phone and I went back to studying for my class. Because what I said out of my mouth was, is, Lord, I trust you. Your word says to cast my care and leave it there. So this now is not my problem. This is your problem. <laughs> and I went and taught a class. <laughs> went home, told my wife, and, you know, we got, to, we got to praying. And every day from that point on, these anxious thoughts would try to rise up. But see, I read Bible 365. I take notes in these services and I apply them to my life. Here, I say this in every class that I teach. Life change happens in the application. So my posture is, is Lord, what's one thing today that I can take away from a service or one thing I can take away from Bible 365 that I can begin applying to my life? So when I got this phone call, the very first thing that rose up when those anxious thoughts came up was Philippians 4.19 that says, my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So my confession was now not, not how are we going to do this? My confession was now, Lord, I thank you that you've already got this solved. You're, you're, you're pulling all the funds together, Lord. You're working this out. And I thank you for it, Lord. And I did that day after day, week after week. And some of you are going to think I'm crazy. Now, this was a large sum of money of what we owed. We went on vacation. I said, I'm not, we're going on vacation. That's on you, Lord. We're going on vacation. And we went on vacation, we had a good time. And every time those thoughts came up, I cast it on the Lord and I left it there. And anytime I felt those feelings, because again, feelings are fickle. That's right. That's right. I would say out of my mouth, nope, Lord, I thank you that you will supply all of my needs, including this one, according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. About four weeks ago, a week before the deadline, they called back. They said, oh, Mr. Thompson, you know what? Man, don't worry about it. We figured out, you know, we're gonna absorb some costs and, 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 and also we're gonna reduce your mortgage payment and, and we got it all taken care of. Yeah. And same way, I said, thank you. <laughs> Hung up the phone and I said, Lord, I thank you that you supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What did I do? Did he do it because I'm a pastor on staff? Absolutely not. 
Did he do it because I get it, all, get it right all the time? Absolutely not. God is faithful and true to his word. I think sometimes what happens is, is we short circuit the process. God's at work behind the scenes and we want to jump in the middle and try to fix it in our own strength. But we have to learn how to cast our care and leave it there so that God can do what he wants to do. I believe that our best days are ahead of us as a church and individually. But we're going to have to approach this the right way and trust him with every aspect of our walk with him. Our responsibility is to control our thoughts and focus on the right things. The word of God must reign over our thoughts and the word of God must have final say in every situation. Now that phrase, final say, I understand that because growing up in my parents' house, I was Mr. Last Word. <laughs> Got in trouble a lot of times, but I was determined to have the last word. I didn't care if it was my dad or my mom and that's probably why I was grounded all the time. But anyways, <laughs> I wanted to have the last word. And even when I was grounded, in my mind, it was like, yeah, but I got the last word. It was like. <laughs> in life, we have to allow God's word to have the last word, yeah, the final say. Doctor comes to you and says, there's nothing else that we can do. The last word is, is that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Your child, who you raised up in a church like this, who knows the word, they were in church, they served, you poured into them, they leave your house, they lose their mind, they go out there, they're doing ungodly things. The Bible tells us that if you will raise them up in the way they should go, they will not depart from What you see might be one thing, but don't discount the fact that God's working on the inside of them. Let the word of God have the final say. What am I telling you? Folks, we have to learn to cast that care and leave it there. And then allow the word of God to keep you grounded, to keep you focused. And life will be much more pleasurable there. Now here's the thing. The word of God is a powerful thing. Hebrews 4.12 says this, for the word of God is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the tents of the heart. It says it's living and powerful. And then 1 Corinthians 6.14 says, and God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. If you don't know how you're going to get through, if you don't know what the answer is, if you don't know how you're going to make it, you need to plug into the power. That's the word of God. Because the promise is it's just like God raised up Christ from the dead, he will turn your situation around and raise you up in the same way. That's power. But we got to plug into the word of God. Well, Derek, I don't understand the word of God. I don't, that's, that's all foreign to me. Yeah. In this day and age, I'm sorry, I've been there. That was the banner I flew for a long time. But in this day and age, it's an excuse, to, it's an excuse that the devil is going to try to use to keep you bound, to keep you frustrated and, and full of anxiety and worry. If you will put forth the effort to get the word of God on the inside of you, you will plug into that power and it will lift you up. But we have to be willing to do that. So we want to stop those thoughts. We want to replace those thoughts. And then number three, uh, putting it bluntly, maybe you're like I used to be. And uh, number three is we, we, we got to get over ourselves. Yeah. I, I struggled with a lot of pride for, for many years, thinking that I had to figure things out. That if I didn't figure things out, then I wasn't a man. If I didn't figure things out, then, then, then you know, I, I was not doing my job. It's not on me to figure it out. We've got to be willing to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves and trust the Lord. First Peter 5, 6, and 7 says this. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him, for he cares for you. So did it say casting some of your cares? Did it say only casting your children? Although we want to cast our children sometimes, don't we? We want to, we want to throw them. 
Did it say only cast the, the small issues on him? Just cast them all on him. Guys, do you realize that there's only so much we can handle, but he can handle all of it? He can handle yours. He can handle yours. He can handle yours. He can handle yours. He can handle, he can handle all of it. We have to be willing to cast it all on him and to leave it there. My, um, my daughter came to us last year or something like that, yeah. Came to us and I'm in the middle of watching a Dallas Cowboy game and I don't know why I was watching it because it was a horrible game. <laughs> but she came to me and, and, and my wife and she said, you know, I feel led to go to the mission field. And I had like this little snarky response because I was mad because the Cowboys were losing. And I was like, okay, whatever. And so she just... And she turned around and went away. Game gets over. She comes back. She has paperwork. She's filled out the paperwork. And she comes. She goes, Dad, all right, game's over. I feel like God's calling me to the mission field. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm like, what is this going to cost us? And she told us it was going to cost her $10,000. And immediately, <laughs> all this stress and anxiety and everything jumped on. And I remember looking at her and saying, well, if it's the Lord, God, Lord sweetheart, then you're going to have to trust him for it. And she looked at me and she's like, okay, and went in her room. And so I was like, okay, you know, what, the, what is that? <laughs> and so I watched my baby girl walk out this very thing. She took that burden because she didn't have 10 grand. Now I could have tried to piecemeal and put everything together because we weren't planning for this to get her out there, but that's not what God wanted. But she took that care. She gave it to him. She cast it on him and she left it there. She stayed in the word. She trusted the Lord. And what did the Lord do? The Lord gave her every dollar she needed to go on the other side of the world. She didn't have to beg for it. She didn't have to bake any goods for it. She trusted the Lord and he blessed her. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the God who wants to do something in all of our lives. You know, I've told the story in the past before where when we, uh, you know, I, when I grew up, I didn't grow up uh, with a lot of money. And so I didn't go to a lot of nice hotels. And I remember when my wife and I first got married and we went to the first nice hotel together. So I didn't know that there were people in hotels who would help you with your baggage. And uh, we'd gone on this trip and I, you know, to this day, I still don't understand how I, for seven days I can pack one bag and my wife packs seven bags <laughs> and she's only five foot. I don't understand what, what, but that's a different story. So I get out of the car and I have my bag and have all of her other bags on me and I'm trying to walk into this building and I'm tripping and I'm frustrated and I'm off balance and this little dude runs up and he's like, hey, Give me your bags. I'm like, dude, I don't know you. What do you why do you want my bags? I'm like, back up, man. Back up. And he kept saying, give me your bags. And I said, I'm not giving you my bags. And then finally my wife came over and she said, sweet. He works for the, the hotel. It's his job to take the load off of you so that we can enjoy our time. Folks, this morning I want you to go home knowing this. That it is his job to take your cares off of you so that you can live a life of peace, yes. a life of joy, and be able to function in this world as he created you to function in it. But you and I, we have to be willing to cast your care, cast our cares, and to leave them there. Let me leave you with one last thing here. In God's word, you will learn that he has plans for your life. Plans that are hopeful and good. And that's Jeremiah 29, 11. That when life is unbearable, when the unexpected happens, that he will and he can carry your burdens for you and allow you to be at rest. That's Matthew 11, 28 and 29. That no matter how big any of your needs are, he can and he will always 
meet those needs. That's Philippians 4.19. And as long as you listen to him, you can be at peace in the midst of any and every situation. Proverbs 133. I want to share these words with you one last time. And uh, I don't know, the Lord orchestrated this, but Justin, I love that song. I love it. But listen to these words. It says, Christ is my firm foundation. We talked about that permanent place. The rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad. Because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? And the answer is, he won't. I've still got joy and chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength because I've built my life on Jesus and he'll never let me down. He's faithful through every season. So why would he fail now? And the answer is? He won't. Come on, say it like you mean it. He won't. He won't. Will you bow your heads with me today? With head, every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here with us today and you, you, you would say, Derek, I, I don't know on a personal level, I don't know God in the way that you know God. I don't know this God that you're describing, but I want to know him. Here in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to, 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 to do something here. But if you're also here and say that, Derek, I, I've had a relationship with God, but somehow I've gotten off track with every head bowed and eye, clo eye closed, I'm going to ask you today, if, if, if you want to make a decision today to make God a permanent source, a permanent place in your life, to make him your Lord and Savior, or come back to him, I'm going to ask you with every head bowed and eye closed, if that's you, as an act of faith, if you'll raise your hand and just say, today I, I want to make that decision. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for putting those hands up. You can put those hands down. Well, I love it because as a church family, we do this every week. We say it together. It's a, it's a declaration that, that we make and we mean and we believe. So say it with me. Say, Dear God, I know mankind needs a Savior, and I know I can't save myself. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And God raised you from the dead. Right now, I confess you as my Lord, as my Savior, as the one who forgives me and restores me. Thank you, Jesus. My past is forgiven. I have a relationship with you. I am a new creation in Christ because I've said yes to you. Father, I thank you for each and every person in this place today, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that as, as they come before you today, Lord God, and make a decision to cast their cares and leave them there, Lord God. Father, I thank you that you will help them to see, Lord God, that the tide of the battle is turning in their favor. Father, I thank you for blessing every household represented today. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for meeting each and every name, need in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Listen. For those of you who said yes, made the decision today, uh, I just want to tell you right there by your seat, down by your feet, there's a card that says yes. I want to encourage you to fill that out and drop it in the, the buckets on your way out there. Um, also, you can scan the QR code here. And as a staff, we pray for you guys every week. And, uh, you know, we, we believe that that decision is huge and, and that your best days are ahead of you. Yes. Guys, thank you. It's always an honor and a privilege. And uh, be blessed. Yeah.